Our guest this week on Veterans Chronicles is World War II and Korean War veteran Tom Toski. He served in the U.S. Navy. Tom, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you for inviting me. We just interviewed your, your brother for another episode, yeah. so I know how this first answer is probably going to go. Where were you born and raised? In uh, Northampton, Massachusetts. I was born actually in the little town of Haydenville. Okay. And that's where we started. And then and, and we always say Northampton because it's a city, not, not a little town, a thousand people. Right. And um, what was it like growing up in the Depression? It was tough. It was, you know, because I was brought up with, with uh, uh, you know, nine in the family when my father was working 24 7, and he was a great dad. He bought us all up, and I had a lot of respect to Jimmy Fisher, who's here, mother. She bought us all up. She was a very nice lady. Uh, 17 years old, she took over when my mother died. I was seven years old, she was 46. And uh, that, that's where it all started. She, started. she was a great lady. I, I, I stayed with her uh, and, and when I, she was not up to 92. 92? And she said, you because know, I'm 92 now. Yeah. Wow. Who's older, you or Bob? No, I'm older. You're older. Is. Yeah. But I'm always second class. <laughs> He's a import. He's a celebrity. I, I'm just a peon down the road. Well, you're a pretty acclaimed teacher yourself. Well, I I work hard at. It. I taught myself, and and I am very successful in teaching. I still teach. I teach at the Western Mass Family Golf Center at Hadley, Mass. And I also teach at Banyan K uh, Country Club in West Palm Beach. What do you remember about Pearl Harbor Day when the Japanese attacked? Yeah, I was uh, riding a bicycle and uh, in the middle of our little town and somebody told me that, that the Japanese has just Pearl, uh, uh, bombed Pearl Harbor. I just said, where is Pearl Harbor? I didn't even know where it was. And uh, then they told me that the Japanese, uh, that was in Hawaii. That's what I remember by. Were you itching to get in the fight? Yeah, well, I was, uh, uh, well, I, I, you know, I, I was just a young kid in high school. And uh, then after after a couple of years of war, I wanted to get in the service. Did and you enlist? No. Drafted. I was drafted. I was drafted in uh, 1943, and uh, I still was in the, in Williamsburg High School. I was a senior, and I been drafted and I was going to the <coughs> draft board and my sister, who Jimmy's mother, said to me, she said, you tell them you're still in high school and they will defer you. So I went there and I was standing in line and the guy ahead of me was uh, 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 getting interviewed by and the guy says, how you like the Navy? He said, I don't like it. He said, I want to go in the Army. And the guy says, well, I guess you're going to go in the Navy. Get the hell out of here. So I said, well, when I go in there, I'm going to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> so he went in. I went in and sat down. He says, how do you like the Navy? I was fine. He said, get out of here. You're in the Navy. And he did me a favor because I loved the Navy. Yeah? And I had a nice place to sleep, nice place to eat three times a day, not like in the Army. But it was a great experience for an 18-year-old kid coming out of a small town of Haydenville. Where did you go for training? I went to Sampson, New York for 
eight weeks. And what did what did they teach you in that training? They just taught, taught, taught us the basics, you know, marching and you know doing the, with all the calisthenics and and you shot a, a rifle. I don't know why that I was, I was in the navy, but because I never and that from there they they sent me uh, <coughs> to home and I went and went back in and then went uh, went to Philadelphia Navy Yard. They shipped me down there. And then what? And then I was shipped again to Norfolk, Virginia, the naval base down there. And that's where I was assigned to the USS Wilmer DE-638. And that was in Vallejo, California. So we went all the way across country with uh, a bunch of sailors that were on, on my uh, ship. And we picked up our, our destroyer escort in Vallejo, California. It was and just just commissioned, and we all went aboard the ship, and then went on a shakedown cruise down in San Diego and back. I wasn't a very good sailor. Was <laughs> tough tough times, but I made it. What was your role on the ship? I was uh, in Norfolk, Virginia, and this officer came up to me. He says, "You're." You got a little talent. We're going to make you a sonar man. I says, a sonar man? What's that? He says, underwater sound for submarines. And we're going to train you. So they started me training, going to school. And I, it, it takes a lot to, to, to get used to the, you know, the pinging sounds of the, from the equipment you have. and. Uh, then I went, then they shipped me and a bunch of our, our sailors uh, over to Vallejo, California. And when I got there, they had enough sonar men, so I didn't want the sonar right away. Uh, it was probably three months, and they, then one of the uh, sonar men was, got shipped out, and I went in and took his place. And uh, that was uh, pretty tough. We had riding on that DE. You know, 300 men on there, and you bounce around like a cork all the time. If it got rough, it was tough. How big of a ship is it with 300 men? It's, uh, I don't know, how, how much to, he can tell you. He was on one, I don't know how long it was, but it took you five minutes just to go from one end to the other. <laughs> it didn't take you too long. It was mainly about 300 uh, sailors on it that we had, yeah. And when did you ship out to uh, the Pacific? Well, it was in uh, Vallejo, Canada, 40, and then around, uh, right up to January of 43, uh, on uh, 44, we we shipped out and went under the Golden Gate Bridge in Hawaii. From there, we went out to the South Pacific and went in and stayed out there for two years. Did you see Pearl Harbor? Oh, stayed in Pearl Harbor, yeah. What was uh, it like? Oh, I didn't spend too much. I saw where all the ships were. They got bombed during Pearl Harbor. But what I was more interesting, I had a brother, my brother Jack, and he was in Hawaii. Oh, okay. So I went to the Red Cross, and they got me in contact with him, and I saw him before I went overseas. He said, what are you doing in the Navy? I said, well, I got drafted. What else you want me to do? <laughs> yeah, but he was, uh, he, of course, he was, he, I hadn't seen him in three years. So, so the first thing he says to you is not, hey, it's great that you're here. It's why, yeah. are, why are you in the Navy? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He was dumb. He, 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 he thought it because when I left, I was just a little kid. Yeah. Yeah, and then, of course, uh, that was, I was probably 15, 16 years old. Uh, and when, when I became 18, I got drafted, so. Right. Oh, that's, that's great. Yeah. Oh. So then you went to the South Pacific. 
Where, right. did, you, where did you go first? Well, we were assigned to the Solomon Islands, the Treasure Island and the Solomon Islands. And then we worked out of there, escorting ships around around the South Pacific. You know, when we were uh, sonar for underwater sound, there was already probably three or four DEs circling the ship that it was a battle wagon or, or aircraft carriers or uh, or troop ships or uh, supply ships and stuff like that. We were always doing that. So it varied widely. Beg pardon? It varied which ships yeah. you'd be escorting. Yeah, whatever it was, uh, you know, we took, we sailed around. Uh, I went around the world twice on the South Pacific. <laughs> That's how many miles we went. Wow. Yeah. What are some of the common places that you went, or did it all well, over the place? I'm proud of, of, of what I, because we, we have, I have five battle stars. I was in five battles, and I was in the Solomons, and then it, we invaded uh, uh, two small islands, uh, Asia and Maple Island, where they were so small that we, you know, we that's all we did was to drop off the troops, and then they they took over the island because the island had radar on it and it was kind of making uh, contact with our airplanes, so they took the islands over. Mm -hmm. And from there, I went into uh, Philippines and Lady Gulf, got caught in the, in the, in the harbor. The Japs had us surrounded. I just looked at TV the other day, and they had a nice little story about that, how, how Admiral Halsey beat the Navy at the head of Lady Gulf when they surrounded Lady Gulf and we were inside there. And we were, we had to make smoke and because the torpedo bombers were coming at us every night. And, uh, lucky I didn't, we didn't get hit. One of our tankers got hit, made a big hole in it. And uh, they had just taken their oil out of these oil and, and it didn't sink the ship. So then we went from there and uh, we got ready to go to Okinawa. Let's pause right there, Tom. Uh, we'll be right back with Tom Toski on Veterans Chronicles. We're back on Veterans Chronicles. Honored to be joined today by Tom Toski, U.S. Navy veteran of World War II and Korea. And uh, Tom, you were just telling us about the harrowing experience in Leyte Gulf, and then you were on your way to Okinawa. Yeah, that was later on. We when they, they made, I can tell you the day we landed on Okinawa, April first, Easter Sunday, nineteen forty-five. Yeah, that was quite a day. Tell me about it. The day, yeah. Uh, well, we went in there with. Uh, the battle wagons. We were screening for the battle wagons for submarines, and uh, that it was no, it was no, uh, no, no. You know, they just landed. And it was very little bit resistance. So we uh, we were screening for the Arkansas battle wagon, and it was shooting uh, their big guns over on the island, and uh, you could. My place of when I was a sonar man, I learned to be a sonar man, and it was always up next to the captain, because that's where our, my station was. See, because once we got in contact uh, with with a submarine or something like that, we took over the ship and told told the captain what what he had to do, and he just laid it down to uh, his speed and, uh, and so forth like that. Well, we were screening for the Arkansas, and the Arkansas kept moving in closer because there was no resistance. So we followed it in. And uh, just as soon as that we got in there close, I was up there next to the captain sitting down, and I used his binoculars to look at the, what was happening on the island. Next thing I know, there was 
shells going landing around the Arkansas. They didn't hit it. So I told the captain, I said, Captain, I said, uh, I said, they're shooting at the Arkansas. He said, yeah, I see that. We're going to get out of here. So he started the ship to get away. Next thing they went a whoppo right by us. Mm -hmm. And they, we took off. He put it in full square speed. And when he did, the shells were landing on our fan tail, not hitting the ship. And they boom, boom, followed us out right out. And uh, it, I was there up on a thing. And next thing I know, he's on the microphone. And he says, all right, all you guys on the fan tail better check your skivvies. <laughs> <laughs> so then that. But then we were sent out to screen for the submarines on, on the island, some way out and uh, with the other ships. And uh, we were out there, and uh, that, I'm telling you, you want to see how bad those kamikazes were coming in. They were, I mean, hitting the ships all over the place. And we were shooting at one with uh, our guns and, and our and, and the aircraft guns. And the next thing I know, they were, here he comes. He started at us. Well, I'm telling you, you never see guys just get so scared. They were, they were uh, uh, jumping from one deck to the next, and I don't know why, but they did it. And there was one guy who was training a big gun. He was training, 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 and then he saw the ship, uh, that airplane guy coming down. He, he was going to jump over the side. And one of the guys standing there, Grabbed them and said, get back on your stage. I mean, that's how you, you never realize, you know, until something like that happens. And uh, it missed us by probably 10 feet. We were lucky. God was with us. And of course, we had a great captain. That guy could maneuver the ship so good. And uh, I was standing there and pretty soon this quarter, I signalman, Come up, Bob Craig, and I always remember that. And he came up, he called me Ski because my name was Al Gustavsky. So I says, yeah, well, Bob, what's the matter? He says, my foot, something wrong with my foot. I says, well, what'd you do? He says, I jumped from, from the fly, from the signal bridge down to the boat deck. And the, uh, the ship, the, the, the airplane landed about 10 feet from him. So when it blew up, a rivet, a little rivet like that, went into his foot. So I looked down there, and there it was, and I pulled it out. I kept it for a while, and I lost it. I can't believe it. And uh, I told him, I said, now you can get a purple heart. <laughs> I said, that you can get for jumping. <laughs> yeah. And uh, but we stayed there, and uh, one of the sailors aboard ship, got appendicitis. So we had to go in to uh, the atoll where all the ships were anchored. There was a hospital ship there. So they sent us in there with him, and that was lucky because the ship that took our place got clobbered. Really? It was, yeah, because there was somebody in there. So we got into the atoll, and, uh, and you can be really surprised how much uh, that they, were, they were even dropping uh, the, the kamikazes were coming in there. And it hit one LST. And we were pretty close to it, probably, you know, a mile away. And we went over there to, to save all the sailors because they were jumping off the ship because the ship was burning up. So we went and picked up those guys and then the captain Try to put out the fire. When he did, he swung the ship up too close and ripped the side of the ship of our DE, put a big hole in it. And, with, and uh, then they had sent us to Guam. I thought probably they, they would send us 
to the state, but they sent us to Guam. Guam instead. Let's pause right there. Tom, we'll be right back on Veterans Chronicles. We are back on Veterans Chronicles. I'm Greg Corumbus, honored to be joined today by Tom Toski. He's a World War II and Korea veteran of the U.S. Navy. And uh, you were just get, telling us the harrowing story of Okinawa. And yeah. uh, keep going. You you're left us at Guam. Yeah, we took us over to Guam, and uh, that's where they said, they fixed us up. We stayed there about a month. I loved it because I was playing baseball back and forth on the dock with a couple of uh, sailors and a couple of Army guys walked by, and I says, hey, where's APO so-and-so? They says, oh, it's down the other end of the island. I said, it is? I said, that's where my brother is. So I was going to go see my brother, the one that I saw in Hawaii. So I got a little liberty, and I, I bummed down the, the, all the way, about 20 miles. And of course, you pick it up by jeeps and stuff like that. And I walked in, and he was sleeping, and I woke him up. He said, what are you doing here? <laughs> I said, well, I would have told him what happened. And he says, how'd you get here? I said, I bummed. He says, you crazy? He said, there's still Japs on this island. I said, well, I made it. The guys were very good. And uh, then after that, we we uh, got fixed up. And they sent us with the third fleet. And we got with the third fleet and went up off the coast of Japan to get ready to invade Japan. Unfortunately, they dropped the atomic bomb. And two of them, and we were, we, we were saved us because they, 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 the war was over, they signed, and we were 500 miles off the coast of Japan, getting ready. You couldn't believe the number of ships that was off that coast, getting ready to go in with troop ships, tankers, all kinds of stuff, was getting ready to go in. Well, we went in, we went in to Yokohama, Tokyo Bay, and then he gave us liberty. Was so ha happy to get liberty after two years out in the South Pacific. We did not, nothing but just go on the island and drink beer. <laughs> and, and, and just like one kid said, he said, Tommy, you know what, we sh we've been out here so long, he says, the natives are starting to turn white. <laughs> and I said, I, I don't know, because we hadn't seen any women at all almost in two years. So uh, we went, that, that was great. I went over and had liberty in Yokohama, and you couldn't believe how that place was devastated. It was burnt right down to the ground. Cause they dropped on nothing but fire bombs, because everything was, everything was, I guess, wood. Wood, yeah. And then we walked around uh, for, well, probably, probably from 10 o'clock to 5 o'clock, we had to go get back over the ship. But it was so great to just get out and you know, get off the ship and see some nice, you know, they were, they were very funny, but we couldn't, we couldn't just separate ourselves from five yeah, we had to go on five, five guys together because they didn't know if you, you know if you were by yourself, you might get killed by one of the Japanese people. So we uh, we walked there back and forth and was that, and uh, then we were there and uh, for about about uh, about two weeks. Then we got the big deal: go home. Loved it. We made a pennant that went from the fan tail all the way up to the bridge. And a big long thing. We're going home. <laughs> and we loved it. We went to go back to Hawaii, then San Diego, and then I they they sent us to uh, to Norfolk, Virginia. We had to go down through the Panama Canal, which opened with like that. But uh, I was so happy that, you know, after two years, 
and 18 years old, and I was now almost 21, yeah, and it comes through with what, what, what I've been, I have, I have five battle stars, mm -hmm. and, and so forth, and came home, and, and went to Norfolk, and gave us uh, liberty, and we, we, I went home for 30 days, and then after I got there, I got uh, discharged. Let me go back to a couple of those other battle stars. You talked a little bit about what happened at Leyte Gulf. I just yeah. want you to talk a little bit more about that when it looked like the Japanese had you dead to rights. Right, right. We were just, we were caught in there. Uh, was we went in with J uh, MacArthur with the ships to help, you know, land all the troops. And, and, it, and uh, we were supporting, we were screening for oil tankers and and supply ships, and we got caught in there. We had to keep moving because of the torpedo bombers coming at, at us at night. We could we had to sleep on our battle stations because that's what, it was that you know, for about five days, and we just, they would just bring the sandwiches and we'd eat, and then we stayed there and made smoke. But we ran out of smoke, so now they started. To pump it out of their, uh, the stacks just to keep, cover the, the battle, uh, I mean, the, the supply ships that we were screening for. And uh, well, then finally we could see in way up in the lane where the, the battle was really taken care of because Halsey was up north, came back down, came back down to the, as we were screened in, and, did a job on the Japanese, and they finally took off. Yeah. Wow. That, uh, well, I, I I was I think the good Lord was with me. Yeah. Clearly. Mul yeah. Multiple times. Well, so I'm Catholic, and I was an altar boy. And when I was uh, drafted, I said my last mass with Father Murphy, and he gave me a sermon. To the people of Angel, that I was going in the Navy, and I think with his, you know, being a nice priest, sending me off like that, it stayed with me, and I think he took care of me. Did you stay in the Navy all the way to the Korean War, did you, or did you leave and no, come back? No, no. Uh, uh, Bobby told you all about his, his great golfing career. I don't have that, but see, we both. After the war was over, I came home, my brother Jack and got into golf. And we were all going down to uh, Miami to play golf and probably play on the tour. My brother, Jack, myself, and Bobby. But Bobby always wanted to be, you know, on the tour. So we went down and I I went down with him because I, I was playing well too. So we we had a lot of problems. So we get to Miami, and we uh, Bobby was there. And I, we didn't have enough money, so I caddy for him, so he could play. And it was nice because I I met Jimmy Demer and a few of the other guys, and uh, I ran out of money, so I had to get myself a job. And Bobby went working for the airlines, and I got a job as a dental technician, or just a delivery boy over in Miami Beach. And I stayed there for three years. And uh, I was staying there, and I wasn't making much money, so I said, well, how am I gonna make some extra money? So I rejoined the Navy. And I stayed in the reserves. Well, when the Korean War broke out, that's when it, they, they came to me and, and another and took all the Sonai man. I was a Sonai man second class, and they sent us. They said you got to come in and train some of the kids, because you got a lot of experience. So that's where they sent me aboard a destroyer, eight sixty four USS Ellison up in Norfolk, Virginia. Uh, I, I, so I stayed with the ship 
and uh, went, uh, I was the training, training, we trained about five, five kids that were just, just came in the Navy and didn't, didn't know much about sonar. Mm -hmm. So went down there and then uh, yeah, for, for me, and I, that's how I got, met my wife. Ah. I met my wife, she was uh, living in Richmond, Virginia, and a uh, nice little Southern girl. She was very beautiful. And I went on a lost weekend. And this other Polish kid and myself, we went to, got a little intoxicated. <laughs> and next thing you know, I was being woken up on a bus to go, go to nowhere, I thought. And at 5.30 in the morning, he woke me up. He woke the other guy, he says, hey, your tickets ran out. I said, where are we? He said, Richmond, Virginia. <laughs> so I done it, I met, went to a dance there, and I met my wife. And uh, but that was in uh, probably January, and then uh, I got married in August. Of what year? What year? That was, uh, I was saying 19, 1950, Jimmy, Korean War. I don't know, I can't, can't remember so much, but uh, I didn't do anything. I just stayed there, and they sent me to the Mediterranean on the destroyer to train the kids. And, and spent three months there, overseas with the Mediterranean, and came back. And that's when I, the war was slowing down, so I had enough points to get discharged, and I, I, I planned to get married. So I, I, we got married while I was in the Navy, and then I didn't want to stay in. I probably would have, but since I got married, I didn't want to do that to my girls. So I, I, I uh, got married, and we stayed in Richmond. Very good. Then. Then uh, Bobby got famous, and and he said, call me up one day. He said, Tommy, you got to come back in the golf. I said, all right. He says, Jack is taking over North Hampton Country Club. I said, fine. I says, uh, I'll see what I can do, but talk to my wife. And I talked him into going up home and be with my brother. And that's how I got back in the golf. And I'll ask you some of the same questions I, I asked him. What is the key to, to you to being a great teacher of golf? Uh, you know, it's a, a try, I try to be simple. Don't overdo it. I learned that by trying to, uh, you know, sometimes you overdo it because you're trying to tell them too much. You have to be, I found out you have to be very simple. Use one or two. Uh, Things that they're, they're doing, and then tell them to come back and see you. And uh, I enjoy it, and I'm I'm a pretty good teacher, but I worked hard at it. Yeah, I studied very hard, and, and I was and I teach up home now. At 92, I'm still they they still want me to teach there. So at this Western Mass Family Golf Center, owned by these nice people, and. Uh, uh, and I just, I just, you know, it, it, it just did me, being <laughs> a blood. You know, the golf and Toskies. <laughs> Where do you usually start? Obviously, each player is going to have different things they need to work on, but what's most common? Is it keeping the head down, keeping the, no. the feet? The biggest is thing uh, is I had a lap. I was down in Florida this winter. Bruce Leisler, I don't know if you know who Bruce Leisler is, He's, he's a national. He won the national amateur tournament. He's 69 years old, and I was on the range. And he came over. He said, "You Bob Tosky's brother?" I said, "Yeah." He always asked me that. Everybody, <laughs> are you Bob Tosky's brother? So he says to my Tommy, "Can I ask you a question?" And he had a couple other people standing there. Everything they were talking about teaching. And he says, Tommy, if you have somebody that's not keeping their balance in the golf swing, 
what do you do first? I said, I check their posture, make them have good posture over the ball. Because if you don't have good posture, you're, you're going to have a lot of problems. Well, I think he jumped about five feet off the ground. He said, I've had a lot of pros. You're the first one that agrees with me. So that's where I start. I start with the basics, the, you know, the, the posture, and then I go into uh, the golf swing a little bit at a time, timing and, and keeping uh, yourself in balance all the time. There's, there's the secret to playing golf. If you can keep yourself in balance, there's because so many people swing and they almost fall down and stuff like that. But that's what I, I just enjoy teaching that way. Well, Tom, your legacy as a, a teacher is quite impressive as well. We thank you for your time today. We okay. thank you for your great service to our country. Thank you. I just, I, I'm just so proud of being in the service of what I did and the five battle stars I got. You know, they can't take that away from me. And that's how I feel. Yep. Outstanding. Tom Toski, U.S. Navy veteran of World War II and Korea. This is Veterans Chronicles.